Globalization is essentially the act of changing local and regional phenomenon into global ones. And chances are you've heard this term before, and you know that we live in a rapidly globalizing world. And if you've heard the term globalization, chances are you've heard the term anti-globalization. But what exactly is anti-globalization? What is the thought process behind it? And what are the goals it hopes to achieve? Many people claim that they are for anti-globalization. But when asked to define it, they only conjure up a loosely connected stream of complaints and criticisms against multinational corporations and neoliberal economics, with no tangible solutions to solve these issues. However, anti-globalization does have clear-cut goals and solutions to solve the problems globalization creates. Pinpointing a set of clear, concrete principles which all anti-globalization movements follow is rather difficult. This is because, as opposed to other movements and ideologies, anti-globalization does not follow a hierarchical method of organization, but is rather a web of connected movements and coalitions. Another issue is that anti-globalization has many names, such as anti-corporate, anti-capitalist, anti-free trade, or anti-imperialist. The common misconception about anti-globalization is that they are anti-trade. This leads to arguments such as, if you are against globalization, then why eat sushi? Or why drive a Toyota? The movement does not reject trade, but in fact rejects a system of government where countries must adopt a set of principles that would transform themselves into an area hospitable for investment. Such principles would look like cutting taxes, privatizing services, liberalization of regulations, busting unions, and so forth. So the evaluative question of anti-globalization is not, is there trade? But rather, does a country have a way to protect itself from the dangers inherent inside a deregulated market? Or does the country have a method for which they can opt out if such trade agreement becomes hostile towards their natural resources? Such questions would be along the lines of, does Canada have the right to ban a harmful gasoline additive without being sued by a foreign chemical company? The answer, of course, according to the World Trade Organization, is no. Or, under NAFTA, does Mexico have the right to deny a permit for a hazardous toxic waste disposal site? The answer is not if they don't want to be sued by the United States. Or does Argentina have to cut public spending in order to achieve foreign loans? According to the IMF, yes. Clearly from such examples, several countries and organizations are being rated very lowly in the evaluative terms of anti-globalization. So for someone who identifies himself as a supporter of anti-globalization, what would their goals look like? Simply, anti-globalization wishes to achieve a political framework where you can take on corporate power and control, empower local organization and self-determination. A framework that encourages, celebrates, and fiercely protects the rights of diversity, cultural diversity, ecological diversity, agricultural diversity, and political diversity. To achieve a setting where communities can plan their own schools and services and natural settings. However, the goal here should not be to benefit the far and away rulers, but rather something that rises from the people upwards that benefits the people first. Anyway, this would conclude my little discussion on anti globalization. I try my best to remain unbiased and rather just give the information and facts as they stand and let you decide whether you are pro or anti-globalization. Anyway, that's enough from me. Questions, comments, criticisms, please feel free to leave them. Thank you, and good night.